piece by Brazilian composer Villalobos on the first page of the score, but it's in French because the publisher assumed that it's more widely spoken than Portuguese. Fair enough. Um, but I don't speak French either. So I typed it into Google Translate, and I can assure you this is exactly what it's supposed to say. <laughs> <laughs> what is a choro? The term has, in the choro music popular, Brazilian two senses. First, it is an event gathering a group of musicians included reduced effective flute, clarinet or clarinet, saxophone, trumpet, trombone, ophicleg, which I looked up, it looks like a big brass bassoon. They were popular in the 19th century. Um, guitar, sometimes with a violin, who meet at night in the Brazilian city to improvise and give serenades on the rhythms and tunes. <laughs> on the other hand, it is also a piece of music, improvisation, even with his character, always so sentimental and contrapuntal, interplay predominated, or from time to time, works on such an instrument, especially the flute or clarinet. The golden age of Choro occupies in the history of Brazilian, Brazilian popular music, a period covering roughly the years 1870 to 1920. <laughs> <laughs> so, in other words, basically the word chorar uh, means to cry, and it refers to a type of music that became really popular in the streets, cafes, and nightclubs of Rio de Janeiro. Um, choro music is marked by spontaneous improvisation and virtuosity and has often been compared to early American jazz bands, even though it developed before jazz. Um, Villalobos has um, had experience playing in some of these groups and really wanted to pay homage to the different sounds of Brazil, be they indigenous Indian, African, or rural folk melodies. So he ended up writing 14 of these toros, and the second, for flute and a clarinet, um, is supposed to be a conversation between two virtuoso street musicians. Let's do it. 